Let's sketch the curve given by a three-dimensional vector function that has three cosine of t for an x component, two sine of t for the y component, and t over two pi for the z component. And let's sketch this in the parameter interval from zero to two pi. This is a three-dimensional vector function because we have three components, x component, a y component, and a z component. Let's go ahead and write that those down. Remember, this corresponds to a function um, that this corresponds to the x component. x is a function of the parameter t given by 3 cosine of t. The y component is a function of t as well, and that is given by 2 sine of t. And the z component is also a function of, of t, and that is equal to t over 2 pi. So you might be wondering, how do we sketch this three-dimensional function? We could certainly plot some points. We could take t in our parameter interval, and we can plot convenient points. Since we have a couple of trig functions, we might want to choose pi over 3, pi over 2, um, 3 pi over 4, all the way around the circle. We could do that. Unfortunately, though, unless we get really lucky with our points, this may not work in a general sense. It may work for this problem because, as you'll see, this problem is actually not too bad. But for other problems where the shape is more complex, plotting points might not give us a good enough sense for what the curve looks like. So let's think about another way in which we can do this. What if we could take a projection of our curve in each of the coordinate planes? So for example, what if we were to shine a light down on our curve from the positive z-axis? What would our curve look like? So let's do this. Let's shine a light down on our curve. Let's project onto the xy plane as if we are looking down from our three-dimensional coordinate system. I'll put our coordinate system over here for reference. So we will have the y-axis horizontal, z-axis is vertical, and the x-axis will be coming right out at us. In this coordinate system, we are going to look straight down from the positive z axis. So in doing that, we're going to fix z. We're going to ignore z at first and just pretend like our curve is exclusively in the x, y plane. So we would have x as a function of t for the for the first component, and y is a function of t for the second component. And we are going to look at this in the x, y plane. So this won't be the curve. It'll just be a projection of the curve. So since we're only dealing with x and y, can you think of a connection between x and y, given the fact that x is a function involving cosine, and y is a function involving sine. Well, let's rewrite this. So this is 3 cosine of t is equal to x, 2 sine of t is equal to, to y, and the z component is just hanging out. I'll just go ahead and lop that off. Does this look more familiar? Well, maybe so. Let's take a look. What if we divided both sides of our x component by 3? 
And what if we divided both sides of our y component by 2? And let's do this. What if we squared each of these two equations? So let's square the x component equation and let's square the y component equation. Squaring both sides leads to the following two equations. We get x squared over 3 squared equals cosine squared of t, and we get y squared over 2 squared equals sine squared of t. So we have these two equations. Our goal is to figure out what to do with them. We see we have a cosine squared and a sine squared. Well, what if we added both equations together? Let's add the left side to the left side and the right side to the right side. So when we add these equations together, we get x squared over 3 squared plus y squared over 2 squared is equal to cosine squared t plus sine squared t. Oh, I'm feeling like we're getting close to something. Because I know that cosine squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1. This is an equation of an ellipse. And as we look down from the positive z-axis onto the xy plane, this will be the projection of our curve onto that xy plane. So looking down from that positive z-axis, we have x is pointed down, y is pointed to the right, and actually let's go ahead and extend this coordinate system a little bit. This is an ellipse where we have the major axis along the x-axis. So this will be 3 and minus 3. And let's move this out of the way a little bit. And we have the minor axis along the y-axis. So this is 2 and minus 2. And when we sketch this ellipse, we get the ellipse looking something like that. Now, this isn't our vector function. It's just a projection of the vector function in the xy plane. And this projection, this shadow, if you will, is going to help us figure out what our actual curve looks like. Now, we should also figure out the orientation of this curve, this two-dimensional projection. So the orientation would be given by the increasing values of t. If we look at t and the x component being given by 3 cosine of t and the y component being given by 2 sine of t, and t ranges from, let's say, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, we would get 3 cosine of t when, when t is equal to 0, this would be 3. When t is equal to pi over 2, this is 0. When t is equal to pi, we have minus 3. When t is equal to 3 pi over 2, we have 0. And when t is equal to 2 pi, we're back to where we started. And for y, when t is equal to 0, 
2 sine of t is equal to 0. And when t is equal to pi over 2, y is equal to 2. When t is equal to pi, y is equal to 0. When t is equal to 3 pi over 2, y is equal to minus 2. And when t is equal to 2 pi, we ba get back the original coordinate. Let's look at these pairs of x, y planes. So for the first point, when t is equal to 0, we have the point 3, comma 0. So when t is equal to 0, we are right here. When t is equal to 3 pi over 2, we are at the coordinate at the point 0, comma 2. When t is equal to pi, we are at the point minus 3, comma 0. When t is equal to 3 pi over 2, we are at the point 0, minus 2. And when t is equal to 2 pi, we are back to our starting point. Therefore, looking at the points as we increase in values of t, we see that the orientation of this curve is counterclockwise. Now this now describes the projection of our three-dimensional vector function into a two-dimensional plane, the xy plane. This isn't our curve though, it is only a projection. Let's look at what the other coordinate planes would tell us. In fact, let's look at the zx plane. If we're looking at the zx plane, then we'll be looking down from the positive y-axis. From that vantage point, the zx plane would look something like this. Let's see what our vector function looks like in the zx plane. So for the zx projection, we would have x, we'll set y equals to 0. So we'll have x and z for the zx projection of our vector function. This means we have x given by 3 cosine of t and z given by t over 2 pi. So here's a question for you. Is there a way that we could connect these two components? Since they have the same parameter t, these two components may have a relationship as we project into the zx plane. Well, let's try this. Notice how z is directly proportional to the parameter t. What if we express the parameter t in terms of z? So the parameter t would be equal to 2 pi z, which means x can be expressed as a function of z, and that means x then would be equal to 3 cosine of 2 pi z. Oh, look at this. In the zx plane, the projection of our vector function looks like the cosine function. 
Well, if it looks like the cosine function, well, let's see. I know how to sketch a cosine. I know the maximum value of cosine with this amplitude of 3. It's going to have a maximum value of 3 and a minimum value of minus 3. And I know if I were to sketch this cosine, cosine would look something like this. We could also look at cosine going down as well. So this curve is the parameterized curve where x is equal to 3 cosine of 2 pi z, or we could say x is equal to 3 cosine of t, and t is equal to t over 2 pi. Now, if we wanted to be more precise where we are along the z-axis, let's pick some convenient points to choose from. To do that, I'll just create a table with our parameter t, our x component given by 3 cosine of t, and our z component given by t over 2 pi. Let's choose some convenient values of t, starting with t equals 0. Well, when t is equal to 0, we have 3 cosine of t is equal to 3, and z is equal to 0. This gives us the point 3, 0, 0, where this is a x, y, z point. So in our x, z plane, this puts us at right here. This point corresponds to t equals 0. Let's now do t equals pi over 2. 3 cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0, and then we have pi over 2 divided by 2 pi is equal to 1 over 4. Our order triple is 3, 0, 1 fourth, which means when t is equal to pi over 2. Oh, let me rephrase that. The, the x-coordinate is not 3. The x-coordinate is 0. So this is 0, 0, 1 fourth, which places us right here. This is the value of t equals pi over 2. And at this value, z is equal to 1 over 4. Let's try t equals pi now. When t is equal to pi, x, 3 cosine of pi, is equal to minus 3, and z is going to be equal to, well, let's see, pi divided by 2 pi is equal to 1 half. This gives us an ordered triple of minus 3, 0 and 1 half. This 1 half value is right about there. And this occurs for when t is equal to pi. Notice we're getting a sense for the orientation of this curve. This curve is moving up as we go from 0 to pi over 2 to t equals pi. And I bet this trend continues. So let's continue. We're going to do this now for t is equal to 3 pi over 2. When t is equal to 3 pi over 2, x is equal to 
Well, let's see, x will be 0 because the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, while z is going to be equal to 3 pi over 2 divided by 2 pi, the pi's cancel, we end up with z being equal to 3 fourths, and our order triple is 0, 0, 3 fourths. That puts us right here. This value right here is 3 fourths for z, and that occurs when t is equal to 3 pi over 2. And let's now do our uh, one more point for the interval of 0 to 2 pi. So one more point from 0 to 2 pi, x is now 3. y is now, well, let's see, we'll put in 2 pi over 2 pi. z is now equal to 1. And our order triple is 3, 0, 1. That puts us right back here. This is 1, and here is our point when t is equal to 2 pi. Well, we now know what our projection looks like in the xy plane, an ellipse. We also now know what our projection looks like in the zx plane. It looks like cosine. I'm thinking that this is going to be an equation of an elliptical helix. But before I'm convinced, let's do one more projection. The projection onto the zy plane. If we project onto the zy plane, we will be taking the vantage point looking down from the positive x-axis. That projection would make the zy plane look like this. Well, this projection occurs for when we are fixing x to be equal to 0. When we fix x to be equal to 0, our vector function becomes 0, 2 sine of t, t over 2 pi, where we are fixing the x component to be 0. This means that the y component is just 2 sine of t, and the z component is t over 2 pi. And you know what? We could do the same steps that we did when we projected into the zx plane by recognizing that y depends on t and z is, is directly proportional to t, we could express y in terms of z. So if we set t equals 2 pi z, we now have y as a function of z is equal to 2 sine of 2 pi z. This would graph to be a sine curve, and a sine curve with an amplitude of 2. So we'll have 2 here and minus 2 here. We know how to graph sine functions. So if we were to graph this sine function, it would start at the origin, and sine would look something like this. Let's try that again. Something like this. Now, we can also go down on the negative z-axis as well. So this is a graph of y as a function of 
z. But, but here, if you can kind of imagine rotating this coordinate system 90 degrees, you would see that dependency. This is what we get with y being a function of z. So let's go ahead and now do the orientation of this two-dimensional projection into the yz plane. To do that, we're going to, again, plot just some point so we can get a sense. I think you know what points I'm going to choose. For the parameter t, let's just choose t equals 0, t equals pi over 2, t equals um, pi, t equals 3 pi over 2, and t equals to 2 pi. These points are just convenient to choose because I know what the trig functions are for evaluated um, with some of those values. So our y is equal to 2 sine of t. So that means when t is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. When t is equal to pi over 2, y is equal to 2. When t is equal to pi, y is equal to 0. When t is equal to 3 pi over 2, y is equal to minus 2. And when t is equal to 2 pi, y is equal to 0 again. And for z being equal to t over 2 pi, when, when t is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. Well, that is right at the origin of our coordinate system in the yz plane. This is the t equals 0. When we do t equals pi over 2, we get for z pi over 2 over 2 pi. The pi's cancel. We end up with 1 over 4. So our first point was 0, 0, 0. This would be x, y, z. But this new point is now 0 because x is clamped to be in the yz plane. Then the y coordinate is 2 and the z coordinate is 1 fourth. This is right here at t equals pi over 2. And our value is 1 fourth. Now, if we continue this, we would see that when, when z is equal to pi, we would end up with, or when t is equal to pi, rather, we would end up with z equals to 1 half. So this is 0, 0, 1 half. That places us right here with t is equal to pi. And this value is 1 half for y. And then when t is equal to 3 pi over 2, the z will be equal to 3 fourths. So 0 minus 2, 3 fourths. 3 fourths is right here. Our point on the curve is t equals 3 pi over 2. And finally, when we get back, when we get to 2 pi, this becomes z equals 1. Our ordered triple is 0, 0, 1. And that places us back right here on the z axis when t is equal to 2 pi. This gives us the orientation of our curve going up. Now that we have the projections for all three coordinate planes, the fun part begins, putting it together to come up with the sketch. We have the projection for the xy plane is an ellipse. The projection for the zx plane is a cosine curve. The projection for the yz plane is a sine curve. Let's put all those together.
we said that the projection for the xy plane is an ellipse. The ellipse had a counterclockwise orientation. Minor axis is 2 and minus 2. Major axis, we're at 3 and minus 3. Here is our xy projection. Now let's look at the zx projection. The zx projection was a cosine function. And we only needed to plot this from 0 to 2 pi. So as we go from 0 to 2 pi of cosine, we have a projection that looks like this. And along that projection, along the z-axis, we know that this is 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths, and 1. And our orientation is up on the positive z-axis. Let's move this over to the left a little bit. And now for the yz plane. The projection into the yz plane would, was a sine. And again, we only need to project in the parameter interval from 0 to 2 pi. And when we look at that parameter interval, we ended up with a sign, and that sign is going to range in value from 2 to minus 2 along the y-axis, and from 0 to 1 along the z-axis. And I overshot. Let's do that again. This was z equals 1 fourth, z is equal to uh, 1 half, z is equal to 3 fourths, and z is equal to 1. So let's put all of this together. In our three-dimensional rectangular coordinate system, we know, again, that the xy projection was an ellipse. Where the major axis was 3 and minus 3 on the x-axis, and the minor axis is along the y-axis of 2 and minus 2. Okay, so that's the projection. That means then, since that's the projection, that means then our curve lies in a cylinder that's parallel to the z-axis. So our curve is going to lie along that cylinder. For any value of z, it's an ellipse. Also, we know we're going between the values of z from 0 to 1. So let's go ahead and do that. This will be 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths, and 1. And now notice that the xz projection is a cosine, the yz projection is a sine. If we were to graph this onto the cylinder, it would look something like this. Here is our helix, our helix that just circles around the cylinder one time. Now, we restricted the parameter interval to be an interval between 0 and 2 pi. What if we looked at our parameter interval going from 0 to infinity? 
Well, if we did that, this will be our XYZ coordinate system. And we already know that it's going to lie in a cylinder. There is our cylinder, and our curve will look something like this. And it would go up forever. And for negative values of t, it would just come down like that for the negative values of t. To summarize now, the vector function given by 3 cosine of t, 2 sine of t, t over 2 pi is an elliptical helix. And elliptical helixes look like springs. They just go round and round on a cylinder. And that cylinder is in the shape of an ellipse.